Welcome to the channel. Today we're going to take a look at one of GM's craziest creations, the Hummer H2. We're going to take a look at like common problems that the vehicle has, especially as they get up with higher mileage. This one behind me is a 2005. It has 170,000 miles on it roughly. And it displays most of the common problems that you're going to find on a Hummer H2. It's not just about this vehicle. I want to talk to you about all of the Hummer H2s and the problems that you're going to, you know, want to look out for if you're in the market to buy a used one or especially one with higher mileage. Now, a lot of the things that we talk about here today, if you've been following along with our rebuild on this, yeah, we bought this one from Copart um, that had just a slight, very light front end accident with it, but we rebuilt it. I've been using it now for a little while, so I can at least speak to some of the things that we've had to take care of on it um, and are more of the common problems. I love the time when GM built the Hummer H2 because like 2003, 4, 5, GM was building stuff like the Pontiac Aztec, the SSR, the H2. Like they were just building some crazy vehicles that were sometimes good and sometimes, sometimes terrible. So we're going to talk about that, and this has a little bit of both. We're going to start out by taking a walk around the outside. Now you'll see that this vehicle does have the GM pewter color. Pewter and the white are the ones most known for peeling. This does have a few spots where that's happening. Now I live in the Northeast. Not everybody who watches the channel does, but uh, if you do live in the Northeast or anywhere where they use salt on the roads, rust is one of the biggest things on your mind. The H2 does not rust out like the GM vehicles from that era the 2005 2006 the chevy trucks and things that the rockers and cab corners go out immediately this one is one of the worst ones i've actually seen as far as rust this panel has been removed right here and there is rust down underneath of it but it is not as common on these as the other chevy trucks like you might think but this one does have some on it it's definitely something to keep in mind now what's going to be a common theme throughout this whole video is plastic and seals on these because every piece of plastic and basically every seal on these vehicles is junk the plastic on the rear bumper and all that stuff that fades that's that's kind of normal that's all right but to find these license plate holders door rear door handles um, they are extremely expensive and hard to find because they all break all of them uh, this you can see the handles broken off on this you should pretty much expect to have to replace one of those if you buy one of these as we move down the passenger side you'll see here's a spot where some of that paint has peeled off over time and then the next big thing that you'll find on most of these is mirrors mirrors get loose rattle go bad start to leak water in real common problem this one you can see someone try to seal it and you know really no luck on that but uh that's a, that's one of the things you're going to find moving around the front these grills these can be a problem the clips on them go bad that just the plastic breaks off and gets brittle over time an even bigger issue than the mirrors for leaking is the roof lights up on top those notoriously leak water in and you'll see more that this one has that problem too now you can get um, kits for those to seal them up and it's not like a big deal but it is something that you'll if you got water on the floor it's usually not one of the door seals it is those roof lights now this is not just a rebadged tahoe a lot of people think that that's what the hummer is that is not the case it is wider um, they used the i believe the tahoe section for the middle of the frame and then the front and rear are um, unique to the Hummer. Could be wrong, correct me on that. But uh, it did come with a locking rear differential, which is really handy. There does seem to be some confusion in the automotive world. They did not come with a front locker, um, at least not in this year. It's not an option. Maybe some other year they had it, but I cannot find any research that says that they did. They do not have a locker. They run the same front differential as the other GM vehicles, but the rear locker still makes it pretty capable off-road we've tested that out a little bit then looking under the rear axle here you can see this is a coil spring suspension in the rear i bring this up because there's two different options for rear suspension on these this does not have the air suspension but that was a pretty common option this one has the coil spring which is actually a good thing in my opinion air suspension on these is known to have a fair amount of leaks and problems that way that generally air suspension systems have over time where lines dry and have a bunch of issues um leaks are you know pretty common so keep that in mind that's a that's a fairly expensive system um to to replace that being said gm did not beef up the front suspension as much as i believe they should have for this vehicle it is independent front suspension i know a lot of people hate that that's all right um, but they came with essentially what is a 35 inch tire from the factory. This has 37s on it. 
and you will wear out the suspension stuff pretty quickly on these. Uh, same as the GM trucks and things from this age, um, or even, even some of the newer ones, but you'll run through ball joints and all the typical um, independent front suspension stuff, especially tie rods. They ran real small tie rods on them. This one has upgraded ones, which you can easily do, but uh, that's definitely something to keep in mind. If you're gonna be off-roading, you're gonna break a tie rod on one of these if it's just the factory ones. Now, under the hood that flips the wrong way on this thing, which I hate, by the way, makes it very difficult to work on anything with these, but it does have the GM 6 liter here with the 4L ADE transmission. This is one of the best gas combos in the automotive world. You can disagree if you want, but they are known to be not bulletproof, but they are a really, really solid platform, and that's no different here. It's, it's great that they put this engine and transmission in here. Um, the transmission, the 4L80, as long as you don't put a bunch of power to it, they're pretty reliable up to 200, 250,000 miles. I mean, I see them with 300 and more all the time, but generally speaking, you're good through at least 200,000 on there. Same thing with the engine. You'll have some small sensor issues. Um, knock sensors are very common. If you notice when that engine started up, it had a little bit of a ticking sound. That is because the exhaust manifolds break on just about all of them. That's something you'll definitely, definitely have to address. Other things like they can have a small miss or something when they're cold, that's intake gaskets, that's pretty common. Some of those, you know, uh, seals and things inside the engine, that's not unheard of, but really a solid platform overall as long as you take care of them. And now as we open up the driver's door, this is where things kind of really fall apart where you can tell GM really cut some corners. So I open the door, you'll notice that it does not drop and it actually shuts nicely, but that's because we replaced the hinges these are terrible. The doors are made too heavy for the hinges, which are the same hinges that they run basically on any other GM truck from this era. And these doors are too heavy for them. It destroys them pretty much. You can replace them. You know, it's a problem that can be fixed, but it's like you can't even shut and open the doors on a lot of these. You have to pick them up to get them to close. Now, GM did try to make the interior on these appear rugged, but that's all they did is they made it appear rugged. As far as actual use, the interior on these will fall apart. Now, if you're into automotive stuff at all, you'll know about GM interiors from this era. They did not have the highest regards. I think they got a bad rap overall because um, I think some of them were actually better than what they uh, were given credit for. But they deserve all the hate for the interior that they put into this Hummer. Uh, this is the worst one by far. I've been in all of the vehicles that GM made pretty much back in these days, and this is by far the worst. The first thing you'll notice that just does not instill any quality feelings is the door panels. The door panels have little pins that wear out over time. They crack up here. There's uh, screws that are supposed to hold in here. Those brackets bend and break. The piece that goes here, they just literally fall out over time. They use standard GM switches and things like that. Those are generally pretty reliable. Sometimes the window switches go bad uh, because water, at least in the trucks, tends to run down right in there and corrode the back side of them. I don't think with the design of these windows that's as common on these. But the overall just fit and finish and like, I mean, it, they really, even new, still creaked and, <laughs> and just did not do any favors to themselves at all. Most of these you'll find are now put together with rivets and drywall screws just to keep them holding on to the vehicle. This is actually surprising that the do door pocket is still attached here because a lot of the time those fall off. They get kicked and immediately fall off. They just have a little bit of plastic like welding on the backside and they are really known for getting knocked off with your feet as you could get out of the vehicle. The Hummer badge, the kick plate here, those generally, like the rubber usually comes out on those guys. They come unglued, the chrome goes bad. Uh, not a big deal. Those, that's not, that's not the end of the world there. One of the things I will give credit for is the seats generally are very comfortable. I really like the design on these, pretty similar to the trucks. The leather wears pretty nicely on them. I mean, it definitely has some wear, but it has 170,000 miles on it. The foam cushion, yeah, it'll, it'll wear out, but overall the seats are one of the highlights as far as the inside. Sitting up in the interior, everything is hard plastic that does not fit all that well or stay in place very well. Um, it, 
you know, just rattles and things inside here. Definitely as it gets older, um, plastic up here will crack and things. Um, not the end of the world, but uh, not as rugged as they made it to look. One of the other common issues that you'll see across all GM products um, in the truck and SUV lineup from this time is bad gauge cluster. This one actually has a custom one that was just rebuilt and uh, looks great, but uh, it has the same, originally had the same motors that all the other GM vehicles had and those go bad over time. Um, pretty much you'll, you'll have to replace those. Otherwise looking across, you'll have the same GM problems of your buttons getting worn off. That's, you know, not a big deal. These ones, they'll crack on the backside and you gotta replace the little knobs on it. The shifter looks kind of cool, but really is not nearly um, as weighted or, <laughs> or as beefy as what it looks like. Then you'll see the armrest. Some of these did not have the leather wrapped armrest. They had one with a little insert in the center of it. This one has the leather wrapped one. Leather is starting to crack on it there. Now you'll see the passenger door that, that has these screws that we talked about to keep it held in, at least so it doesn't come off in your hand every time you shut the door. The Bose stereo in these sounds pretty decent, nothing too crazy, but uh, generally a pretty reliable system there. While there is some reports of electronic issues, you know, computers and things going bad, and it definitely does happen, body control modules and things, um, I think those are far left, less common than what people um, kind of act like they are. I haven't seen that as much, um, but it is, it is something to keep an eye out for if you're noticing some uh, weird electronic things going on. The one sort of electronic issue that you'll probably come across is ABS issues. The ABS light comes on pretty frequently. It usually is the ABS pump. Sometimes it's a wheel sensor, but a lot of the time, if especially if it's getting like sort of hyperactive, as I'd like to call it, like engaging too much, generally your ABS pump is on the way out. Now it's time to decide if this is a buy or a bust. And it's a little tough to decide because they are so good and so bad at the same time. There's actually like not many vehicles that I can think of that are quite like this. Um, the engine and transmission, solid. Um, they, you know, you're really not going to have a lot of issues as long as it was even somewhat cared for. I mean, it's a small block Chevy. Okay, there's just, you know, they're, they're pretty much bulletproof. Then there's the side of you can tell that GM just threw this thing together. I mean, they they really just mailed it in for anything on the exterior or interior. Like, they really did not do a good job. Um, driving dynamics, things like that, it actually drives pretty nice. Even with, like, 37s on it, drives better with 35s, obviously. But it's actually a decent driving vehicle. It is huge. Um, so it's tough for if you live in the city, you would have a you would have a hard time finding, you know, good parking spots and things in the tighter parking areas there. But um, really, it, it drives just fine as long as you have a little space for yourself. So I'm going to very cautiously say that this is a buy. And here's my reasoning. These are going up in price right now. You can probably buy one and sell it <laughs> a couple years later and not lose any money or even make money if you don't like destroy it or put a terrible amount of miles on it. With 200,000 miles, I mean, there's still, you know, that's probably like the, you know, you're looking at bottom end ones there, but they're still selling between like 10 and 15 grand. They actually dropped, they were much lower than that a few years ago, um, and they're starting to climb back up now. It, uh, like, it's not uncommon to see one with 150,000 miles for 20,000 or even, you know, up from there for a really nice clean one. And uh, so you really got a chance to drive something and not have it depreciate, which is a rare thing to find. It's not going to leave you sitting on the side of the road or any of those things. And it is better off road than what they are given credit for. So if that's something you're interested in, it definitely has those capabilities as well. Though, good luck putting it on Jeep trails because it gets a little bit tight as we found out. And if you uh, didn't see that, go check out our off-roading video with this. And uh, sometimes you'll bump into trees and things. So if you are considering buying one of these, I just want you to know what you're getting yourself into. As this video has highlighted, they have a their fair share of common problems and as cool as they are, because I think they're awesome. All right, I know they're not as cool as an H1, I know, but they are a pretty cool vehicle. Definitely from that time where GM was just building whatever they felt like, um, but <laughs> They aren't nearly as bad, I don't think, as what some people say, and they're probably worse than what the Hummer H2 fans say. So there's some, there's somewhere in between there. But overall, I think it's, I think it's a buy as long as you, you're okay with your feet being soaked from the lights, you know, dro dropping water straight down in, and doing some upgrades to make sure that you got a reliable suspension system, and you know, 
doing, doing those types of things. With that, if I missed anything in this video, there's some common problems you're aware of, put them down below. If I got something wrong, put that down below too. I always inevitably mess up a few things during one of these videos, um, but I wanna hear your thoughts, whether you think it's a buy or a bust, or if you think that I'm completely wrong in general. I'm okay to hear that too. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a great day.